folks. This is Keith Gribbins with Compact Equipment Magazine. I hope everybody out there is staying healthy, safe, and productive. Uh, this is a new chapter in our video series called Compact Equipment Conversations, uh, where a lot of us are social distancing in a big way on the job site um, or working remotely still. But we're taking the opportunity to connect uh, and talk about all the cool new machines and technologies coming out in the Compact Equipment realm. My guest today is a gentleman uh, I've been working with for over a decade, uh, and he's definitely one of my favorite people in the industry, Russell Warner, Senior Vice President of uh, Global Product Management at Solaire, a uh, great compressor brand. Today, we're going to be talking about how to select and properly operate a portable air compressor. Russ, thanks for taking the time to chat. Thank you, Keith. It's great to see you. I actually got the opportunity to hang out with Russ and Solaire, a crew at both the Rental Show in Orlando and Con Expo in Las Vegas this year before the world shut down. Uh, the famous green compressor brand showcased a comprehensive line of small air machines uh, at these shows with a variety of engine options, including the 185 series uh, Tier 4 Final Portable Air Compressors, uh, which our readership is a big fan of. Uh, the brand, in fact, has a 50-year history making compressors, and since the founding of Solaire in 1965, uh, the company has designed and manufactured both its rotor and errand assemblies in Michigan City, Indiana. The company was acquired by Hitachi in 2017, which has only boosted its business both domestically and internationally. Um, so much so that Solar announced a $30 million expansion project in Michigan City last October. Long story short, Solar knows compressors. Russ, a lot of our readers will be turning to that 185 CFM category of compressor um, that's so popular. So maybe we can use that as a benchmark for what our readers love. Um, and maybe we can start off with what approach you'd be looking for when it comes to picking a towable compressor. Um, and then maybe we can start off with power specifically. Um, a compressor's cubic feet per minute, CFM, uh, pounds per square inch, PSI, our vital specs for optimal production. How can a compress our contractor understand their uh, air power needs uh, when considering applications, tooling, price, whatever you think is important? Sure, yeah, and I think you hit it on the head. It's all about pressure and flow, uh, PSI and, and CFM. And um, most contractors have a pretty good understanding on, on what they need for pressure and flow. Uh, a lot of the devices that are powered, uh, the abrasive blasting equipment or the tools, you know, dictate what, what they need for that. So that's usually pretty easy information to get. You take the number of, of tools or number of nozzles on a, on a blaster and, and you add that up to get your, to get your answer. Uh, but the one thing I think that most, most contractors could you know, could benefit from would be when they're looking at pressure and flow. There's a couple other factors. Um, an air compressor is like a, a generator uh, in, in a lot of ways. It's a power source. And just like with the uh, electricity in a generator, if you have a long extension cord, you're going to get a, a voltage drop. Uh, same thing with an air compressor. If you have a long hose, you're going to see some drop in pressure in your PSI. So one of the key things to understand is uh, what pressure do you need at the tool or at the, the mechanism? And you need to measure that with some type of needle gauge and compensate for it. Um, just an example, a 50 foot uh, hose, air hose that's uh, three quarter inch wide can rob you of about 20 PSI in those 50 feet. Um, and if you do a, a one inch hose, it's only five PSI drops. So just like a, an extension cord, you know, the, the thicker gauge, the better uh, efficiency you've got. So one thing a, a contractor can do is really understand the pressure loss so they can upsize the air compressor at the source to make sure that they compensate for the pressure loss at the end. And then just like, um, like the pressure for flow, altitude has a huge impact. And uh, for every thousand feet gain in altitude, they lose about four to five percent. So if they're working at a higher altitude, sometimes they need to compensate with that by getting a larger air compressor as well to make sure they've got the right machine for the job. Great insights, Russ. Um, let's talk about pneumatic tools. We talked about the power source. Maybe we can talk about the tools. Um, there's a variety people can get, uh, breakers, river busters, rock drills. What are some of the most popular air tools um, and air applications that contractors are employing these days uh, in the compact equipment realm? Well, we're still seeing a lot of the old standards, the, the 60 pound breaker, the rivet buster, the 90 pound breaker. Some of the newer ones or more popular ones are the, uh, the air shovels or tampers as well for confined area compaction or excavation. Those we're starting to see quite a bit of of uh, requests for and, and usage. And one of the most fun uh, applications we've seen is as uh, industrial spaces get renovated for uh, for residential, you know, old warehouses, old manufacturing facilities in cities, there seems to be a lot of need for 30 pound uh, chippers and breakers for uh, recycling of brick and building material, but also just renovation and changing that, that space as well. So I really enjoy those types of jobs. Very cool. Um, 
moving towards options, what sort of options would be available with compressors? I know Solaire was just promoting uh, its newest Perkins engines variants. Uh, so there are engine options, but what other considerations and choices will a uh, renter or buyer have? Uh, yeah, there's there's millions of options, uh, and it all depends on the application and the region that the machine is going to be located. And obviously, if it's a cold weather environment, there's cold weather uh, packages to help that machine start and run. Uh, there's, of course, different types of hitches for the trailer and brakes for the trailer, and there's engine overspeed valves. Uh, we see those are popular uh, in refinery applications as well. But one of the most important options would be after cooling and filtering, or filtering, which is where you take the, uh, the temperature of the air down and you can filter out impurities as well. So depending on the application, you might need a little bit drier or cleaner air. And those are critical. But I think the most, uh, most exciting option that, that we offer is the telematics, the air links package that Solar offers, gives the operator a lot of insight into the machine operation, but it's all remote. You can uh, you can log in and see where the machine is, how it's running, if it needs service. And that really is a, is a great option that I, I highly recommend. Uh, awesome stuff. Let's talk about uh, durability and maintenance. Compressors are often rental machines, uh, so it means they endure a lot of different operators and environments. What technologies and systems make a durable, long-lasting, portable compressor? Um, Impact-resistant canopies are popular. Um, you just mentioned sort of integrated di diagnostic systems like telematics. Um, how would you determine toughness and ease of maintenance when renting or buying a compressor, Russ? Well, um, an air compressor really lives and dies with the engine and the air end. And that's that's key. Really, you want a, a machine that's got a good reputation with the air end, one that's made by the manufacturer and that the manufacturer stands behind. That's the most important service element with an air compressor. But also there's, you mentioned serviceability. And really, I think that goes hand in hand with, with access. Like our machines are designed to to give the you know give the service technician complete access to all the the key components you know doors on each side wide openings um, and just a good way to get the the technician close to where he or she needs to be so they can properly diagnose the machine and once the technician can have access to that um, everything else is much is much easier and then finally really just the you know the the rugged design it's it's how it's tested you know if a machine is really tried and true and tested uh, you can see it in, in the way it operates and the way it maintains. And especially if a machine is in a rental fleet, uh, that means the, the rental operator, the owner understands that that's a, a high quality piece of equipment and can survive that environment. And that's always a real good sign to tell if it's a good machine. That's a great point. Um, what operational advice can you share, Russ? Obviously, there are a lot of different tools and a lot of different applications uh, that range from breaking concrete to sandblasting with air compressors. Um, are there any important operational insights that you could share with us that might apply across a variety of those applications? Yeah, yeah, I'd say uh, it starts with pressure and flow again. So the things we discussed with altitude and uh, pressure loss are important. So I would highly recommend putting the air compressor as close to the work as possible. Um, always on a flat level ground, lots of space around it. So there's air, so it can get fresh air to, to cool itself, of course. And then I really recommend that the operator get familiar with not only the safety features of the compressor, but how to start the compressor, how to stop the compressor um, quickly if, if need be, and also get familiar with the control panel. There's a lot of different control panels and they have a lot of good information that, that speak to the, the performance of the machine, temperatures, flows, um, and those types of things that can really help uh, prolong the, the longevity of the machine. And then of course, proper maintenance, make sure the filters are clean, make sure there's def in the def tank and that all the, uh, all the, um, fluids are changed when they need to, and that's the best way to to really have a you know a productive workday. Um, in our industry, in the compact equipment realm, uh, portable air compressors are often used by landscapers and irrigation specialists to clean and winterize sprinkler systems. Uh, maybe you can explain how this application works, uh, Russ, and which size and type compressor works best for these types of applications. Well, sure, sure. The um, the most common air compressor for, for irrigation and evacuation usually is a 185 CFM. Usually pressure is not as big a deal and a lower pressure machine is, is plenty to, to evacuate the, the water. And really the application is simply um, introducing air into the system to evacuate the water out of an irrigation system so that um, 
that there's nothing there to freeze. And freezing not only can damage the piping, but the valves and the, uh, the other systems that the, the water normally would travel through with an irrigation system. So a 185 is the most common. They're good for smaller jobs, homeowners or, you know, or small properties. And we do see 375 uh, CFM and larger machines go to some larger properties, but most of these do have different zones and so uh, they don't need a whole lot bigger air compressors because as you work zone by zone, it, uh, you know, 375 is, is plenty to take care of that one, one individual zone. And uh, the most important thing is uh, make sure you understand the pressure limitations of the system, of the irrigation system, so you don't introduce too much uh, pressure and damage the system. Also, uh, make sure you understand the interface. You know, how does the air compressor interface with the irrigation system? Just to make sure you have the proper fittings and and uh, and, and hoses so that uh, you're able to to properly hook up and evacuate the air. But other than that, it's it's pretty simple. Okay, excellent. Thanks. Um, Solaire is a great brand with a long history. Um, the company has a ton of different products today. Uh, but Russ, maybe you could pick one or two that have you excited. Sure. Uh, there's there's certainly two that that I'm excited about, and and I showed them to you at, at the Con Expo show in Las Vegas. The first one is our our brand new 800HH900H air compressor. Uh, it's an exciting machine. It's a single axle uh, 900 CFM machine at 150 psi, and so it's very compact and small. But it has all the the service features that I, I spoke about and that it's easy to get to the main components and, and technicians can, can really work on the machine very well. But it's also variable pressure and variable flow. We, we installed the Solaire's patented um, air system that uh, it's called a spiral valve. And so we can change the pressure uh, on the control panel and the machine will automatically hit that pressure and compensate and give the maximum flow it can at that pressure. So it's a very efficient machine and it's very flexible. It can do a number of applications uh, across the spectrum and that makes it more, more versatile for a rental yard. They can have a higher utilization because it's always working for them. And also for a contractor who has a bunch of different types of jobs, it's very handy for them. So the, the, the 800HH, 900H is exciting. And then the, the 1600H is, is another uh, machine that we've redesigned. We've added some great service features that make a big difference and, and a few other features. The biggest service feature is we've removed the center post that's in the, uh, in the center of the main opening so that it gives just unparalleled access to the interior of the machine. And we've added a condensate management system as well. So when, uh, when condensate is produced, when the, the air is cooled for different applications, uh, in in most uh, most machines, that has to be collected and disposed of. But with our condensate management system, it's uh, it's injected into the exhaust and then burned off and evaporated. So it's it's maintenance free and very easy for the operator to uh, to just keep doing his job. Great info, Russ. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us today. Um, uh, Solar has some great products, and uh, I would encourage people to go check it out. Thank you, Keith. It's good talking to you. CE readers can visit www.compactequip.com for more info on portable power and solar in general. Um, thanks for taking the time to tune in and be safe out there. Bye for now.